it's not been two weeks and this is still leaking uh. Hey guys, thank you for joining me and welcome to my corner of the lab. So today I'm going to talk about the project I've been doing for the past two months. What I have learned, what I want to accomplish and what I wish I could have done better. So a brief introduction of what my project is actually about. I'm currently working in the Hof Group of the Physics Division in IST Austria. So that stands for Institute of Science and Technology. And what this research group focuses on is fluids. So anything that involves turbulent flow and flows at a high velocity is right up this group's valley. And my project is no exception. Scientists have been bugged about how fish can move through water so quickly, continuously and easily. The whole swimming motion, named undulatory motion of fish, propels them through water extremely fast. Given how much denser water is comparing to air, all the fish species have evolved to suit movements in the aquatic environment. Some at extremely high speeds, their body shape therefore mimics a shape profile that is extremely hydrodynamic, meaning that they are as good as shapes come when it comes to moving in water. A family of the fish called the scombrids, which includes tuna, are the best examples. Hence, they are the subject of quite a few publications. There are many factors that contribute to fish moving through water like this and my particular project focuses on how what's happening at the surface of the fish affects its movements. Just like fluid that flows along any real surface, a boundary layer develops as a result of friction and creates such flow on the surface. Now as the flow progresses further and further along the surface, we can see this pattern emerge and hence flow separation occurs. What makes flow separation particularly troubling for fish is that when it separates, if you look at the pressure at these and this points, there is a pressure difference across the surface. So when there is a pressure difference, that means there is a net force in this direction, which acts as drag. This is called pressure drag. The earlier this separation happens, the more drag the surface and hence the body experiences. Hence, the delay of such separation is ideal. And that's what I'm trying to look at with my project. Any re-injection of the flow into an already turbulent layer could delay separation by changing the velocity profile of the flow at the surface. This could be what happens on fish bodies. The outflow of water at the gills could not only provide some forward momentum like thrusters, but more importantly, it could mean the relaminarization of the boundary layer which could be more beneficial than the forward momentum alone. So how do I exactly perform this experiment? In order to reach fish a high enough water, Reynolds number we're using a rather powerful pump. The pump is directly connected to this open fish tank. And you can see the metal nets there that's trying to make the flow homogeneous. That means the flow is nice and constant throughout. The acrylic channel you see on the side is used to reduce the cross-sectional area of the flow. That means I can achieve a faster flow rate. What I'm trying to measure here is whether the outflow at the gills reduces the drag on the body. And I'm trying to measure the forces using the dynamometer there. The second pump sitting at the end of the tank is used to pump water through the model. At the end of the tank, it's been connected all the way back to the pump. So on the first day, I learned how powerful my pump is. And to control that, we need a frequency converter. And to control the frequency converter, we need a cable that connected to the PC. And then I've downloaded a software that I haven't figured out how to use yet. It is quite convoluted. You can read very deeply into this, but I don't want to get political. Okay, I was kidding. The bottom one is made by the workshop, but it didn't function quite well. And I find an external company that make one just as well. So when it comes to choosing the shape, this lovely publication has given me the data for the body shape that minimizes the drag. So I take the best data and I use a aerofoil tool online to select the aerofoil and I just create a 3D model of that and I get a 3D printed. So, besides all the technical knowledge I've learned about how fish swim in the water, what else did I learn about doing a project on your own especially? The first thing I realized is that nothing is going to go as smooth as you planned. So you always have to prepare for a plan B. One of the favorite phrases my supervisor says is, theoretically, it could work. But realistically, you never know. 
So basically, he's saying always be ready for something to not work, and always have a plan in mind, maybe two. So something I've been trying to do is to have two backup plans going in parallel, while waiting for the result of my primary plan. So in that case, even if my primary plan is failing, my backup is already ready to go. So for example, we face the problem of not being able to create a scenario where the Reynolds number is high enough. So what we did is to create some acrylic models in order to reduce the cross-sectional area of the flow. And that has helped us to achieve a little, slightly higher Reynolds number. Still, it's not perfect. Anything that can help you to get a bit closer to your project objective is going to be useful. And nothing is going to be as smooth as you want it. That's why I always have a backup plan. And another thing I quickly realized is that how having a certain expectation can really change the experience of your project. So in the beginning, when my supervisor de described the project to me, I thought that's ridiculously complicated. And because of the state it was at before I came here, it seems that things are all over the place. So I spent a few days trying to break everything down and understand what needs to be done for each section. And then everything seems pretty easy. So back then, I changed my expectations from something that seems impossibly complicated to a bunch of things on a to-do list. And that changed the way I think my project is going to go. And a few weeks later, even though I've broken everything down, things are still not working out and many more other things are need to be done. Rapidly changing your expectation just because of a new development is not necessarily good for your experience. So don't go too high on the high and don't go too low on the low. Just have a level head and you'll enjoy the whole thing a bit more. I didn't necessarily learn this, but it was something that's been emphasized after this whole experience. So you've heard this many times, read more. And that makes as much sense as it always has been. On my first day, my supervisor handed me about 25 megabytes of documents. And initially, I was just buried in this sea of words. I have no idea what, where to go, how to proceed. There is so much information, but I'm not sure how much of that information is actually useful. It's actually what I call nutritious information. So there is no way to know whether information is useful to you before you actually spend the time and go through it. And that's sort of what I did. So it's only through reading through all that material that I realized what kind of model I'll be going for, what kind of Reynolds number I need. And then after doing some math based on what I read, I can then design my experiment rather than going the other way around, which is what I think my predecessor did. So having a knowledge base that comes from reading or any sort of learning is going to benefit you massively before you even set foot in the lab. And the last thing is Loki's favorite. Get out. No. Come on, you love it. I hate it. It's great. It works every time. It's humiliating. Do you have a better plan? No. We're doing it. We are not doing get help. Once you exhausted all your options, after all your reading, all your learning, all your doing things on your own, and you still can't figure out what to do, just ask somebody. There is always going to be someone who knows more than you, who's better than you and who probably knows the, solu the simplest solution to a problem you deemed impossible. I was trying to fit a plastic tube onto a thing that's of similar diameter, and it doesn't work. So my supervisor simply run it under hot water and just plugged it on. And he said, he's not the smartest, but he has plenty of experience. Get some help and things will be a lot easier. So that about sums up what I have done and what I've learned. And, ever, and since the start of making this video, I finally figured out how to get the whole setup working. And I will start the proper testing next week. This summer has been a lot of fun spending all this time at Institute of Science and Technology in Austria. This job opportunity is called ISTERN, and it's awesome. So I highly recommend anyone applying through whatever career portal they may have access to. And enjoy your summers. Peace.